Okay, quick introduction to assignment two. Uh, so hopefully you've downloaded and uh, opened up the A star sample program from the participation program uh, here. And again, remember there's two ways of doing that. You can grab this zip file and open it up either in Eclipse or NetBeans, or there's this assignment on GitHub uh, that you can go to. You can grab this URL and then in NetBeans just click on a project that's not uh, in source control using GitHub yet and just go to team git clone uh, and paste that URL here your login information should be here from the previous uh, example and just hit finish next and walk through hit next next and then it'll create that project for you here um, and then you can open it up and again, uh, we're looking at this in A star, we're looking at this calculate shortest path algorithm. And we went through this somewhat in the um, participation exercise. Uh, and in fact, we, we did some work here that's just quickly, we uh, sorted this so that it uh, did Driscoll's algorithm shortest first. And then we also started calculating the an estimated distance to the end, a heuristic distance, and started adding that so instead of just the total distance from the goal just being the distance from the start, uh, we're using this from the start plus the heuristic estimate of the distance to the goal. So we made those changes um, here. And again, those are um, highlighted in the assignment also. Um, so yeah, so these are again the, the changes uh, we've made in the participation activity. So make sure those, those are good. Now we're still running into a problem when we're going uh, from the college to the mall from node 1 to 11. Let's look at what that is. Um, so we're going from 1 to 11 and it's finding this path 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 11, 1, um, I'm sorry, that, that is the shortest path. It's finding 1, 2, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's finding 1, 2, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's finding this path, which isn't necessarily the shortest path. Now the problem comes in is that um, it first finds this path. It's, it, it, it explores 1, 2, 3, so and then 8. If we run it, uh, so again I'm running it from 1 to 11, going from node 1 to 11, it explores 1, 2, 3, and then it 8's the next shortest one, so it explores 8 and 9. So it explores 8 and 9. But when it explores 8, it uh, adds 5 to the frontier list and calculates the distance to 5, and it's a pretty long distance over to 5 uh, there. So then later on, <clears throat> and it um, when it actually explores 5, it's looking at this route to 5. But we can actually find out uh, here, okay, we explore 8, 9. Now when we explore five, 4, um, we look at neighbor 5 and say it's already on the frontier list, do nothing. And that's our problem. We're going here, we're at 4, and we look at 5. Oh, 5's already on the frontier list, let's not do anything at all. Um, and that's a problem. We need to uh, do some recalculations there. So remember we keep uh, track of two things. Uh, there's a list of uh, nodes that we have explored and then a net list of nodes on the frontier. Those are just beyond the neighbors of the nodes on the f uh, that we've explored. And again, once we've we put five on the frontier list, uh, and then we look at it here and we say, oh, it's still, it's already on the frontier list, but we've actually found a shorter path. And it, so if this is a shorter path to this, we need to update this, uh, the information for this. And that's what you have to do in this assignment. Um, so uh, if you make the right changes, it should find this new path there. And we want to focus, let's look at our code here. Um, so. Uh, backing up. So this is our inside A star. We're in this calculate shortest path. Uh, we're going through all the nodes uh, and we keep looping whether frontier size is not zero and we keep checking if we've reached our goal and if so we're going to stop. 
um, each time we remove the current item, we grab the current. Oh, yeah, where is that? We grab the current item off the frontier. Yep. Uh, we remove it from the frontier and add it to the explored list. Um, so the current item is the item we're checking, and now we go through all the neighbors of the current uh, one. So we this loop, this for loop, uh, loops through all the neighbors of the current list. So if we're looking here, uh, like we're at four here, we'll have. We'll, we'll check two out, we'll check six out, we'll check five out. And you can actually see that in the code running. Uh, two, five, and six are all checked from node four, all the neighbors. That's this loop here. Um, now I'll just warn you, this is some of the most complicated code we're going to run into this class. So I'm going to try to give you as much hints as you can, because we're only in the second week, and this is very complicated code. So uh, bear with us, we'll get through this. Uh, so this is our loop that we're looping through, and Sorry about that. Uh, checking each neighbor, getting uh, so the neighbor is the the neighbor we're looking at. Uh, so here we we've we're at four and we're looking at five. So four is the current node and five is the neighbor. Um, so we're checking if it's already on the explored list, uh, and if so, we're going to skip over it. Now we're going to check if it's on the frontier list. Um, and if it is, we're going to work on that a little bit. Uh, so if it's on the frontier list, we're going to, I mean, if it's, if it's not on the frontier list, we're going to add it to the frontier list uh, here uh, after we print it out there. And then we have to do it up a bunch of updates. Uh, we have to work on the past. So every node has the previous node that came from. We have to set that to the current node. We have to update the distance from the start, uh, which we calculated from up here. Um, we have to do some estimate of the heuristic distance to the goal. We have to calculate then the total distance uh, from the start to the goal predicted uh, using the distance from start plus this heuristic distance. And then we sort the, resort the frontier list so that we have the shortest ones first. Okay, so that was all working. Now we have this else. Else, if the neighbor's already on the frontier, do nothing. That's not true. That's why there's a little question mark here. We do have to do something. So we have to check if this new distance is shorter than the previous distance. So here, if we're at 4, we're going to look at this new distance from 1, 2, 4, 5. If that distance from start is shorter than this distance, uh, then we're going to update the frontier to show this new path. So um, there are two variables you'll be working with. New distance from start is the new distance from the start through this new neighbor. And if we just go look at the neighbor dot distance from start, that's what we stored in the neighbor as the previous distance from start. So this is the old distance from start. So we've got to check if the new distance is less than the old distance. And if so, we're going to do these uh, this stuff. We're going to update uh, the previous node to the current node, update the distance and all that stuff. And that's actually the same code that's, oops, I clicked. So see this code here? Uh, this code, this same code we're going to want to do down here inside our if then. So you've got to build an if then here, check this distance, and if so, then you're going to do this same code uh, down here um, and set that up. So see if you can get through that all. Uh, if you have questions, remember part of the participation activity this week is to post questions uh, online or answer other people's questions or offer suggestions. Okay. Um, now, once you make these changes, um, okay, let's just add uh, a change here. So you do some sort of if-then statement here. Uh, okay, and I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so. So I have some if statement here that changed. Now, uh, you can zip this all up and submit it. Or remember, you can submit this through GitHub uh, if you downloaded it through GitHub. Just go to team uh, commit uh, and enter some uh, name here for the commit. Uh, Uh, so I I do some short description, a sentence saying what this is, you know, uh, finished assignment one or something like that, and then I and it'll show you the files that it's changed, and we're just changing this one A star thing. So you hit commit, uh, and then you have to push that up to GitHub so that I can see it. So under team remote, 
you'd say push. Uh, it should already have the repository up here that you put in here. Uh, and then you say next. And then you just uh, don't worry about this master branch and that sort of stuff. Hit next and finish, and it'll update it up into GitHub. And then you should be able to see the changes if you go up and actually look at your assignment or your thing in GitHub. Um, you should be able to check the assignments. But again, I think using GitHub is a lot faster than zipping things up. Uh, but you can do it either way. Now, some grading criteria. When you get these changes correctly, you can check these paths. Uh, and particularly the first one is the important one. The other ones are just to make sure you didn't break something. So, okay, let's get rid of this changes for now because I don't want to give out the solution. That would be no fun. Okay, so we want to go from 1 to 11. So from 1 to 11. And right now it's finding this path, 8, 9, 10, 11, and it should be finding this path. So if you have correct changes, it should be finding this path. And here's a couple other ones you can just check to make sure you don't break anything else while you're doing this. Uh, I don't have tests, unit tests in here. Normally we'd have some unit test systems up here with Java unit tests, and we'd be able to run these all. I don't have that set up for this example, so you can just run these manually. So, Okay, so that's the assignment.